All right, boys, welcome to a new series that I want to bring you guys called Tier List Thursday. Every single Thursday, give or take a couple lazy Thursdays, I'm going to be doing a tier list and you're going to hear a draft league player's thoughts on something random. I don't know. Leave me some suggestions down below. This week's are my thoughts on the value of every single Pokemon in the Teal Mask DLC. And this is very important because value and how good a Pokemon is are completely different. There can be a Pokemon that's only five points, but I think that the things that it offers for being a five point Pokemon are insane. So we could go in the insane value tier. This is obviously extremely subjective. Everybody has different opinions. And yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. If you guys want to fill out this tier list as well, there will be a link to this down in the description below. And while you're down there, leave a like and go ahead and make sure you subscribe, man. Only about 50% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed and if you subscribed we could potentially double our community and speaking of community we have a community server in which you can make this tier list post it and tell me why I am incorrect all right let's start it off I'm not gonna beat around the bush the only top tier in my opinion introduced in the teal mass DLC is gonna be dark right dark right is the only Pokemon introduced like this that's like kind of allowable it really depends there's a lot of debate going on about it right now in the draft community but it is the top tier Pokemon it is top one Pokemon if it is allowed in my opinion we also had some really cool Pokemon introduced the Ogre Ponds. I just wanted to be known. I was a day one Ogre Pond believer. I think these Pokemon are awesome. I think they look awesome. I'm a big fan. There's a lot of different rules going around as to how these Pokemon are draftable. Whether you get all four in one draft, which in my opinion is a little bit much, you get one mask, one non mask, or you only get one Ogre Pond in the entire draft. And for this specifically, I'm going to say that these cannot Terra because these should not be allowed to Terra in my opinion. Ogre Pond Fire is easily the best one. That is some insane value. I've seen it go anywhere from like 16 to 14 points, which is probably about accurate for it. I think Fire Plus Grass is great stab. It has access to spikes and momentum, obviously set up in Swords Dance, Taunt, has Leech Seed plus Spiky Shield, very good stats overall. I'm a big Ogre Pond believer. As for the other Ogre Ponds, we're gonna go ahead and go into the Teal Mask one. I'm also sticking it up here in Insane Balony. It's not even close to as good as the Fire Ogre Pond just because it's a pure grass type, but I've seen this Pokemon go as low as 12 points in certain leagues. It ranges from 12 to 15 from what I've seen. And I think if this thing is in 12, it's just such a good Pokemon. I think it's like a third round pick. Everything about Ogre Pond Fire is still true about this Pokemon other than the Fire Stab. It's just a great momentum grabber, a fast spiker, fast taunter. It adds a lot to a team and it's a great ground resist in a meta that doesn't have too many great ground resists. As for the other two, I've not seen them used a lot so i don't know how to properly place these so i'm gonna put them in decent value because i don't know enough about them to say too much about them in draft league specifically conceptually they both seem fine they both seem good i think the other two are probably better and if not i still think that this pokemon is better bang for your buck as far as value goes and if we're saying only one mask can get drafted it's definitely fire i don't see a reason for these to get drafted over fire pretty much ever unless you like the look of them you just want to try them out whatever the case may be i think fire is pretty much the king here we're just gonna bounce through a couple of random pokemon now one pokemon that i think was made a little bit better this generation is arbok i want to say it's adequately valued it's even overpriced in a couple of leagues it's not even an option that i have but uh, it got access to Scale Shot, which is pretty cool, but it's still an Arbok. Yeah, it has Coil, and it has a way to boost its speed now, which is pretty cool. And it's a pretty cool low-tier option, especially for Terra, but I don't think it's more than like four points at most, and that's in a very thin dex. It's probably still a two to three point Pokemon realistically. It's not very good, but it does have access to Intimidate, and it's a poison, it's a fairy resist, and it's usable. We'll try to get all the Gen 1 Pokemon first. I don't know why they're out of order. The next one that I know numerically is up is going to be Sandslash, and I'm a big Sandslash fan. However, it's still not a very good Pokemon. It's got horrible uh, special defense stat, not a very good speed. It is a rapid spinner and a meta that lacks a lot of rapid spinners and it has spikes and stealth rocks. It's a decent low tier ground if you don't have any better options, I guess. Like it could definitely take a hit. It still has knockoff. It has decent enough utility to where it's draftable for sure. Okay, I think I got the list sorted. So next up is gonna be Weezing and Weezing. I am a Weezing fan. I think this Pokemon offers so much. It's usually around five, six, seven points. I think this Pokemon is great value for what you're picking at five points. It's got great physical bulk. It has access to Newt Gas to be a grounded poison or Levitate to be a poison that is a ground resist. This taunt, will o wisp it, it retained Pain Split, which people didn't think it was going to, because I guess Rotom didn't or something, or at least I heard it wasn't going to. I think it's a really good value. It's a T-Spiker too. I don't know if it always had T-Spikes, but it does now. It is sometimes just a check to a physical wall. It is a very physically bulky Pokemon. I'm a big fan. I think if you want a good low tier poison, Weezing is the way to go. Galarian Weezing, I'm going to say it's a little underpriced right now, just because of the fact that it has Defog and not a lot of things do. It also has access to Misty Terrain, which can help enable some 
set of sweepers of the generation that don't want to get burned. However, there are not that many that want to abuse that this generation. I'm sure there's some good pairs that I can't think of off the top of my head, but a decent enough terrain setter still has access to levitate and it's a fairy type. I've seen it priced around 10, 11 points. I'd say that's pretty decent value. It's a pretty good Pokemon overall and it's definitely better than adequately valued. I think you definitely get some good value out of drafting this Pokemon. Next up, we're going to pick Clefairy. Clefairy is actually a usable NFE Pokemon. It's pretty good, especially in the, with the lack of fairies. However, a lot of people really like Clefairy and it's priced pretty high. I'm not very big on Clefairy. I think it's definitely adequate. It's not unusable by any means. I think it is extremely overpriced in some leagues, but I'd say you get pretty good value of it, especially in a limited dex that doesn't have a whole lot of fairies. And Clefable. <laughs> oh, I'm a Clefable fan. We're going to put it in great value. I can't justify putting it in insane value because 16, 15 points is about what it's worth. Oh, but there are so few fairies and it's like the only good defensive fairy. You know what? Just for the limited decks, we're going to put it in insane value because there are no good defensive fairies in this generation. Shout out to my boy SJ. He hates Clefable. He thinks it's not good at all. This Pokemon's crazy. There's not that many fairies in this generation. And unlike G Weezing, where it's not really picked for its fairy typing, you have two amazing abilities in Magic and are aware you have amazing coverage. The only thing that you lost is Soft Boiled. You still have access to Wish and you still even have Moonlight with APP, which is what Soft Boiled would have been anyway. And you maintained Knock, which I didn't think that it would. I'm very happy to see that it did. I think that because of how few defensive fairies, how few good defensive fairies there are in this generation, you're getting some good value with Clefable for sure. I said Clefable. Next up is going to be Snorlax. And I guess this depends on the Terra rules. I guess we'll just, we'll assume no Terra for a lot of these. I'm, I'm going to change my mind as time goes on. But Assuming no Terra, I think Snorlax is pretty good value. Uh, it's either decent value or great value. I'm leaning more towards great value because of a similar reasoning to Clefable. There's not a lot of good defensive normals in this generation. The Snorlax is a very good defensive normal. And it also got a couple of new moves that people did not realize. It got like Encore, which I think personally is massive for Snorlax. It's my favorite move in the game, so I'm biased. But preventing things from setting up in your face, maybe if it's a physical attacker, you can just clap a little bit and it'll stop setting up. I think it's really big for Snorlax, especially in a deck that kind of lacks those normal types, those ghost immunities. I like Snorlax, it's great value. For it's tough because it does get tidy up, but still not very good. And a lot of people are overhyping it right now. I'm gonna say, like, what is it priced at one point? For one point, it's like adequately valued. Obviously, you can't get much lower than that. And it's like a decent Terra captain after I just said we're not factoring in Terra. Just because it gets tidy up, we're gonna put it in adequately valued for now, but I'm not very happy about it. Knocked out, it's usable ish is 86 special attack with tinted lens i don't know man i think it's kind of unusable it's kind of bad compared to other things in this decks if it's one point it's adequately valued if it's two points it's unusable in my opinion there's a lot of better things that you could get for that I don't know. We're going to put it in unusable. I mean, Aria Dose, you have to just put in adequately valued just because of webs, right? Like, it's definitely not unusable. Sticky webs are very valuable. And I've seen people run like Terra Ghost to spin block with Aria Dose and stack with like T spikes and stuff, which is pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of Aria Dose, but I don't think putting it in unusable would be very justified. I definitely think for the price point, it has more use than Knocked Out. Politoed, you're getting rain, but there's not a lot of rain sweepers this generation. So it's hard to put it any higher than decent value or even adequately valued because Politoed itself is not a good Pokemon. It's just the fact that you get rain with it there are not any high tier rain abusers this generation it's like walking wake which <laughs> wants sun i don't know i think polytoad is adequately valued gen 2 pokemon suck man here's the thing with the gladiator it's not unusable I think it's adequately valued. I think it's not a very good Pokemon in this generation. I used to really like Gligar as a low tier pickup. Uh, immunity makes it really nice to not get toxic as a bulky Pokemon. But now Knockoff is back and it's pretty prominent. Eevee Light is going to get knocked off pretty easily, I would say, especially on a defensive pivot. Spikes, Stealth Rocks, and T-Spikes are cool, but I don't think you're getting like great value for having Gligar. Macargo sucks? I really want to put it unusable compared to the other Pokemon. It kind of is. Little... We're gonna. That one hurts. Oh man, oh man. Piloswine. I am a Piloswine truther. I think for the value that you are picking this Pokemon for, it is amazing. But there's also a lot of knock users too. So I want to put a decent value because it's definitely a good Pokemon. It's a good low tier rocker option. But much like Gligar, a defensive pivot with a lot of mods getting knock for the first time and back, it's not great value, but it is good value. Mighty enough unusable like there's so many good darks in this deck there's literally no reason to ever pick mighty Anna. realistically it has intimidate and that's cool it's weak it's got no good stats there's no reason to ever pick this pokemon <laughs> ludicolo is the only real rain sweeper 
in the generation that I think is worth anything. So and I'm a big photo fan. So I'm gonna put it in decent value just because of that. Shift read, same thing. It's actually a lot better this generation with Wind Rider. It's immune to a couple of different things. And I think it also got a couple of new moves. So I think Shift Tree is actually a Pokemon that right now is a little bit underlooked. Illumise and Volbeat, I don't know. Uh, I think Illumise is the one that doesn't get Prankster and this one's the one that does. This one's unusable. I don't see why you would ever draft it. And Volbeat's like kind of usable. It has Prankster, it can like scream, I think. It has Tail Glow back, so that, that means something. I think both of them do but neither are good Pokemon. Crawdon is a weird one. Crawdon is a fine breaker, but it's slow. You're gonna be running the same set most weeks. There's almost no versatility and it's frail. So I'm gonna put Crawdon adequately valued. It's not a bad Pokemon by any means, but I feel like with the points that cost like 10, 11, 12 points, there's probably something that will fit your team and fill some more roles a little bit better than Crawdon will. Milotic. Now Milotic in a generation, it has flip turn back, it has scald back, it still has recover. It lost APP, but it's still pretty good. It has access to boots now. Uh, I think Milotic is really good, especially in a dex with almost no bulky waters. It's going to be the same thing as like Snorlax. It's going to be great value just because of the lack of really good water types. Milotic's been going pretty early in drafts. I don't think that'll change anytime soon in any post DLC drafts. Why is Dusclops on this list? I didn't even know this Pokemon was here. I don't know. He's definitely not unusable. So I guess that just puts him by default and adequately valued. Oh, Chimeco. I'm actually, I'm a Chimeco fan. I think Chimeco is cool. It's one of the only Pokemon to get Heal Bell. It's still not very good, but it has Levitate. It does have some versatility, like some screens. It can set some screens. It used to have Cosmic Power, Stored Power. I have no idea if it still does, but it's, it's far from unusable, but it's definitely not, you, you're not getting a lot of value. Ninetales is weird because just like Politoed, it's a bad Pokemon. But there are a lot more Sun Sweepers this generation because of Protosynthesis than Rain Sweepers. So I'm very tempted to even put a great value, but just because of how bad of a Pokemon Ninetales is, I'm gonna put a decent value. There's never a reason to take this Ninetales over Torkoal. Torkoal is just a better Pokemon. It has defensive usability, it has rapid spin, it can get hazards up. Ninetales is bad, but it sets the sun. And honestly, maybe I should have put Vulpix on this list and put it in adequately value because it also sets the sun, I guess. Jirachi is obviously a very good Pokemon and I'm tempted to put it in great value just because it's a good Pokemon, but that's obviously not what this list is. I'm gonna put it great value just because there's not a lot of good steals. It's a very thin dex. I've been saying that for a lot of these Pokemon. Not a lot of great steals. It's definitely a little expensive. It's not bad by any means. It's got good stats. It has momentum. It has setup options. It can be physical or special, obviously, because base 100s across the board. I'm just not a huge Jirachi believer. I do think you're getting more bang for your buck with something like Clefable because I do think there are more usable low tier steals than there are usable low tier fairies. So I think I'm I'm satisfied with putting Jirachi in great value over insane value. Oh, it looks like I missed Alolan Ninetales here. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to put, uh, ooh, I'm so close to putting Alolan Ninetales in insane value. I don't think that would be fair. I don't. I really don't think this Pokemon is insane value. It's close. There are a lot of good ice types to abuse it if your league allows Chi and Pao. And Veil is so good on a Pokemon that can pretty much guarantee get it up with a very good speed tier in a dex that has pretty poor speed tiers. Base 100 is considered good in this dex. And it also helps mods like Max Caliber set up. I, I'm so close to putting an insane value, but just because there's not like slush rush sweepers, there's only like Ice types that get buffed like Bax Caliber, Mamoswine, and Sheen Pao, and Weavile, I guess, but that one doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put it in great value. It's still a good Pokemon on its own. It does get hardwalled by ice types forever, but it has access to like Encore and Aurora Veil, vale, good utility. It's a good Pokemon and it itself gets the ice type buff. So I almost want to put it in insane value. It is this close to being insane value. We have all the Sinnoh starters. They're all like kind of all the second stage. They're all pretty usable in their own right. And I'm actually going to put them all in adequately valued because they're all good Pokemon. They're all like two, three point Pokemon that are actually usable. Like they all have rocks. We have priority Mog Punch with Monferno. It's actually a decent enough life orb attack. I'm a big Monferno fan. Purple Up gets Roost now, which is awesome. And it keeps Stealth Rock and Grotto gets Stealth Rock and I, it kept Shell Smash. So like all of these Pokemon definitely have usability and I like them all actually quite a bit. I think these are really good low tier picks. I'm going to be a little bit biased on this one. Back in Gen 8, I didn't do that many leagues, but almost every league that I did, I picked Torterra. I think most leagues that I did, I picked Torterra because I think that Pokemon was insane value for what it provided good low tier grass in a matter where there's no hidden power i like it a lot i still think it's really good value but the fact that it got shell smash and its price jumped up significantly 
makes it not as valuable because before it was like four or five points and that Pokemon was worth way more in my opinion. Like you got so many things out of it. You got a ground type, you got a bulky physical wall, you got a ground resist and edge quick resist at that. And it still got Swords Dance plus Rock Polish back then. But now it's price has jumped up like nearly doubled, sometimes even more than that. I'm gonna put it in great value. I'm still a massive Torterra believer. It's one of my favorite Pokemon, man. I genuinely love this Pokemon, but obviously it's a little bit of a steep price point now. So anywhere between like nine and 11 points is typically what I've been seeing. Nine, 10, 11, 12, somewhere like that. I still think it's a good Pokemon. I will still draft it my fair share of times this generation. And I still think you're getting just good value. It's a good grass type, but I don't think I can justify putting it in insane value. Next up is Infernape and Infernape's a really good Pokemon. I think it's actually a little bit underrated this generation. I'm gonna slap in great value alongside to Terra. I think it's a great fighting type and a generation that does have a lot of good fighting types actually, but it adds a really good speed tier in 108. It has some utility with things like Will-O-Wisp and even Knockoff now, which is really crazy for it. And it got access to Drain Punch too. I think Infernape is actually a little bit overlooked because of the changes that Empoleon and Torterra both got. No, I, I like it a lot. Speaking of Empoleon, I am actually gonna put this in insane value. I'm a big Empoleon believer. It does not keep Defog, unfortunately, but the access to Roost while being a Water and Steel type, two types that are so uncommon in this generation and being a water type that resists resist is not weak to freeze dry from like iron bundle which is a top tier threat right now i think empoleon is really good value right now and i think that price is going to jump up we're going to see a jump up as the generation continues specifically in this limited decks like i keep saying water and steel types very shallow this one fills a lot of roles it's a good wall it now has competitive over defiant knockoff flip turn now roosts i don't think it kept scald i think i might have said it did earlier i, I don't think it kept scald i think empoleon is really good value for where it is right now. Next up, Ambipom. It lost Tail Slap. It's not very good. It's definitely not unusable. Adequately valued, I guess, is the only place to put it. Yanmega, I think, is a little undervalued right now. I think it's actually a decent breaker in this meta. And if we do factor in Terra, I think it's great value. But because there's no Terra in my mind right now, we're going to put it in decent value. I still think there's a lot of usability to it. Gliscor. Oh, after I made the Gliscor sucks video, this is a tough one because I think the Gliscor is bad. I do. In draft league specifically, I think Gliscor is not very good. It offers a lot of roles and it fills a lot of roles. I don't think it's bad. I think it's bad for its price point. So therefore, I'm going to put it in adequately valued. Certainly not unusable. And because we don't have an overpriced here, I think adequately valued is the only place to put it. You could put a decent value depending on where you have seen it priced. I've seen it priced anywhere from 12 to 15. I'm leaning more towards 12, 13 myself because of the lack of roost and defog spikes t spikes u turn knockoff it has a lot of utility and it's really nice but it comes at a steep price point for what you really want in the pokemon and it's, it's piss weak people forget that it only has 95 base attack next up mammal swine i think mammal swine's pretty good value for where it is like 13 14 points it's a really good breaker and access to trailblaze now helps it beat things like quagsire and gastrodon which i had to run freeze dry for before so i think it's really cool it's just the mammal swine that we know and love which i've always thought is pretty good value you for where it is it has rocks it has knock probo pass i mean with terra this pokemon's pretty cool but without terra i'm damn near certain that this pokemon is as close to unusable as you can get it is probably one of the only undraftable steel types in this meta including berserker i guess probo pass is not good dust nor i don't know adequately valued he's fine i guess that he could be a good spin blocker he has will-o-wisp he kept pain split but i looked at his stats so i'm going to keep him in adequately valued you're not getting a whole lot besides a good spin blocker a decent spin blocker with dusk nor why does it not have levitate by the way that doesn't make any sense if it had levitate it'd be pretty decent value next up is fion and fion's weird because i haven't seen anybody use it this pains me to say because i really dislike manaphy i'm a little bit of a fion believer base 80s across the board is usable and it still has take heart i'm gonna put it in decent value nobody's really used it yet but i want to see it be used i think it has the exact same moveset as manaphy so it's definitely not unusable i'm gonna put it in decent value i think you're getting a little bit of a good pokemon for whatever this may be priced two three points like a decent water to be honest and then manaphy unfortunately with take heart it might be insane value but i'm gonna put it in great value right now because i i'm still an avid manaphy hater base 100 across the board tail glow take heart now take heart is crazy actually i wonder i don't know if anybody's tested this yet i wonder if if you rest talk pull take heart if it wakes you up that that might change my opinion and put it in insane value take heart does it do it oh my gosh yo oh my gosh my opinion on manaphy has just been changed i actually think manaphy is the truth now okay manaphy is now insane value i think manaphy is crazy now that we know that it can wake up 
through Take Heart Rest Talk. That is crazy. Damon's up next, and it's fine. It's a grass type. There's nothing crazy about it. It gets earth power, so that makes it decent value because it can hit uh, things that you wouldn't normally think in Seed Flare. Being able to minus two special defense is really nice. So I'm going to put it here. I wish it kept Sleep Powder from Legends Arceus because then it would be great value, but it didn't. So we're going to put it here. Girder. I think Girder is actually decent value for being a low tier Pokemon that kept Defog. It still has Mach Punch. It still hits pretty hard. It's pretty physically bulky. Girder is pretty good value. And I think Kong's going to join him. He's nothing crazy. He just kept Defog. So I think he's pretty good value for a 13 ish point Pokemon. Next up, Levani. It's It can't be lower than adequately valued because of webs, but it's still a pretty bad Pokemon. Swanna. Listen, guys, I think Swan is not unusable. I think it's actually a pretty good Pokemon for being like one, two points. It has deep bug. It's a water type. It hits decently hard and it has a fine speed tier. I don't think it's unusable. That might be a hot take. Chandelure, I think it's a little overrated this generation. Honestly, I'm putting it in adequately valued. Bad speed tier. It's completely walled by a couple of different typings, like a good normal type like Snorlax can evolve it forever. That's not really fair. It has thick fat. You're usually choice locked and that means you can't run boots, which I don't really like this generation with limited removal. Chandelure is fine, but it's another Pokemon that like doesn't fill very many roles. It's like a fire immunity, which is cool. It's a spin blocker, which is cool, but you do not want to switch this in on a spinner that has access to knockoff. It has a little bit of utility with like Will-O-Wisp. I just don't really see the value in it, truthfully. Polyrath, I almost want to put him un unusable, undraftable, but like it's a fine Pokemon. It has phasing with like circle throw. I think it kept that. It didn't get flip turn, which is like a sin. It's a water absorb Pokemon. It's a swift swim sweeper, very loose term. Me and Xiao is actually, I think, pretty decent value right now. A fast U-turn Mon with knockoff. It has regenerator as well. Reckless high jump kick. I think Mian Shao is being a, lot, a little bit slept on the early parts of this DLC. I think we'll see a little bit more Mian Shao usage as time goes on. That's actually a pretty good Pokemon. Volibee is usable. I think it's adequately valued. It's a good low tier Pokemon. I think it kept access to Defog, which is pretty cool. So you might even, I might even put it in decent value because it's like usable bulk roost. I think it kept toxic knockoff and Defog. That's pretty decent value. And I'm going to put Mandibuzz right up there with it. Mandibuzz is being a little overpriced right now because it's one of the only viable defoggers, but keeping access to things like Toxic means it's, it's still a really good option to do so. I'm a big Mandibuzz fan. I think it's one of my most drafted Pokemon of all time. Trevenant, it's certainly not unusable, but I'd be lying to you if I told you it was good value. So <laughs> Victory Bell, I actually think is pretty decent value being a Sun Sweeper. It keeps like Solar Blade, I think. It's like there's a debate whether this or Shiftry is a better Pokemon. Kind of. I think Shiftry is kind of cut and dry the better one now with the, the buffs with Wind Rider and things like that. But it's not like Victory Bell is too far behind it. They're very, very close. I think if you put Shiftry in decent value, you got to put Victory Bell in decent value. Charger Bug is actually it's actually a good Pokemon. It's actually pretty good. It gives you a much more reliable web setter than things like Ariados and Levani. It has Volt Switch as well with momentum. It has ways to lower speed with String Shot, which can miss. It does, however, have Thunder Wave. It's a good Pokemon. I think it's actually a pretty good value pick. I haven't really seen it priced anywhere. So if it's one point, that, that might be great value if it's one point. It's a good Pokemon. You do have to be a little bit wary of how many Pokemon have knockoff now, though. But realistically, you're not using it as a rest talk wall most weeks probably you're probably using it to get webs up and then get a safe volt switch into a pokemon i think vika is also decent value i think it's a good low tier pick it has uh, levitate obviously as an electric bug type which is pretty cool extremely strong it has momentum it has webs it's one of the better web setters in the format in my opinion but it lost roost and i just found that out recently if it didn't lose roost i might have put this in insane value i'll be honest especially with the capability to terra i love vikavolt rubambi i think is super similar to vikavolt it's good value and it's a fairy and it's got a good speed tier you know what i'm gonna put rubambi great value fairy type good speed tier it gives you webs it's not the best pokemon it's frail and weak but it's checks a lot of boxes and I like that. I'm a big box checking type of guy. I, I guess we missed Golem and Alola Golem. I'll be honest, I'm throwing Golem into unusable. I think if I put Probo Pass there, I have to put Golem there. Alola Golem is actually pretty interesting. If you take Terra into account, it's a decent low tier captain. But in general, things like Volt Switch make it kind of interesting. A lot more interesting than regular Golem, in my opinion. And then Como-O is probably decent value. Klingerous Soul, Stealth Rock, it's the same Como-O we've known. I don't see a reason to put it any lower than decent value, but without Terra, I don't see a reason to put it in grave value or insane value. Cramorant. I'm not going to put Cramorant in unusable because I like Cramorant. He might be unusable, but he gets Defog and he's a water type. Morpeko is pretty close to unusable, but it's a rapid spinner, so I have to put it 
inadequately valued, I feel. And then we get some more new guys. So Monkey Dory, Okie Dogie, and Pheasant Dippity. Okie Dogie, I think it's pretty decent value. I think it's a good mid-tier breaker. Very similar to Heracross as far as a roll filler. I think it's a good poison type. It's a fighting type that breaks fairies. It has access to knockoff. Monkey Dory, I'm a big fan of. Very biased for sure. I think it's just better Gengar. It has parting shot. It's a fairy killer. U-turn as well. Toxic chain on top of being able to U-turn and pivot out. I like this Pokemon a lot. Pheasant Dippity is tough because it's easily the worst one of the three, but for how low of a point value it is, it's probably honestly decent value. You get a good fairy type, a grounded poison, a decent speed tier, a good special wall. It's definitely not unusable. I think it's bad comparatively, but I don't think it's like actually a bad Pokemon, if that makes sense. And then lastly, we have Sinastra and Diplin. I think Sinastra, Sinistra, whatever, is decent value. It's a good special breaker. It's a grass type, not weak to fire. Trick Room Setter, it has the ability to set up with Iron Defense as well as Nasty Plot. I think it's actually pretty good value for where most places are putting it right now. And then lastly, Diplin, unusable. I think it is one of the worst Pokemon in Draft League right now, quite genuinely. I think it's very bad. Do not draft this Pokemon under any circumstances. And that's gonna be the list, guys. We got like top tier Darkrai, insane value over here, some great value options, decent value, adequately valued and unusable. I realized halfway through that you guys probably couldn't see a lot of the or a lot of the unusable stuff because I've been just like kind of piling it down there. But you got the idea. All right, thank you for watching. This has been John Jr. Signing off.